Praise God. Tell you what, that's one of my all-time favorite songs right there. Uh, powerful, Rebecca. Thank you. Um, while you're still standing, let's just quickly go to the book of Jude. Um, we're going to read just a couple of verses out of Jude. Um, verse 20. But ye beloved, don't you love it when God calls you beloved? Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Notice he doesn't say building up your faith. Faith is already complete. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ an eternal life of some having compassion, making a difference. And others, saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by flesh. Yeah. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask you to anoint me, the Christ that's in me. Let Jesus preach today this word. Lord, we need this word today. Remind us. God, why you've created the church. Set our spirits on fire today, and when we walk out of this building, let our face be set like a flint towards the purpose of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated. I want to preach to you today about pulling people out of the fire. At 5.30 a.m. on the morning of the 27th of January, 1903, in London, England, in Colney Hatch Lunatic Asylum for the Assane, a fire broke out that housed 320 chronic and insane patients. The fire resulted in the loss of over 50 lives. It caused numerous injuries and was responsible for the total destruction of several of the insane asylum's buildings. The Illustrated Police News went on to describe the reaction of the patients as they were attempting to rescue them. Some became excited and had to be carried out. The difficulty of persuading deranged and insane people to leave quietly was a great task. One official declared that the terror of some of the patients was heart-rendering, while others seemed to be totally oblivious of the gravity of the peril that they were in. Many of the inmates rushed aimlessly to and fro, unconsciously hindering the work that there would be rescuers. And others had completely lost a self-control that they ordinarily possessed, and they fought like their rescuers were their enemies some apparently overcome by abject terror and yet afraid that their rescuers intended to harm them, ran deliberately away from safety and crouched beneath their beds and in other places of imaginary shelters. Make no mistake that the devil has set the earth that we live on on fire. And though you cannot see physical flames, there is a fire of hell that is loose in the earth today. And like this insane asylum, most people don't even know that they are in danger. In fact, they are so oblivious to it 
that you try to go to them and tell them that you're in trouble, you're in peril, and they'll fight you. The dangerous position today is that the church has forgotten what its primary purpose is, and it's only this, win the lost at any cost. It is only about soul winning. It is not about the elaborate facilities that we have. It is not about how many people that you can put in the building. Sadly, we have too many preachers that can fill a building, but they can't fill an altar. If you don't believe all of the Bible, then don't preach any of it. I'm sick and tired of politicians that want to extract from the Bible from Obama on some scripture taken out of context to somehow propagate their own illegal schemes when they don't believe the rest of it. It's either all true or none of it's true. And if you can't believe the whole word of the Lord, shut your mouth and quit quoting the word of God. You talk about hypocrites want to stand on one side and raise the Christian flag and on the other side they want to raise the flag of hell and tell us their believers, Steve, you're right. We're going to see men who are already seeing that stand on the platform with Oprah Winfrey and everybody else and declare that we want peace. Listen, Jesus said this, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to divide. Why? Because souls are going to hell and God needs a church that can rescue them. We are not a private club. We're not the Lions. We're not the Moose Lodge. We're not the Masons. We're not the Illuminati. We are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the door is open like the Noah's Ark. And God saying, whosoever will, let them come. The problem is you can't get people saved until you get them lost. Most of the world does not know they're going to hell. You don't hear messages on hell anymore. Half of the preachers don't believe in the Bible. Most of America does not believe that the devil is a real entity. Do not believe that there's really evil and righteousness. That there is no Jesus Christ. There is no heaven and there is no hell. If that's true, then we are in big trouble. But God has been able to sustain the church for this hour. And the Lord, hallelujah, is sending out the clarion call. Is there anybody that's willing to touch the flames of hell and reach in at the peril of their own soul and say, I'm going to pull you out? It doesn't matter if they say, no, you need to get a hold of them by the power of God and set them out of hell. Why are we here on Saturday mornings for prayer? Because we are snatching souls out of hell. Can I tell you, this haphazard, lackadaisical approach, seeker-friendly, is the greatest thing that hell ever came up with because it gives you a form of God, but there's no power. If you're going to invade hell, it's going to take the glory and the power of God to reach in there and pull them out. Oh, there's a mandate on us. When did it become more important for our own personal gain? When did we get so drunk on materialism that we watch our neighbors we watch our families, we watch our children marching to hell every day. Come on, we're marching to hell. We're marching to hell. 
and people don't even realize that they're getting close. Then you run to them and you try to pull them back, but they don't understand what's going on. It takes the conviction of the Holy Ghost. John Wesley spent 15 to 18 hours a day preparing, studying, preaching, traveled over a quarter of a million miles, not in a plane or a custom-built bus, but mostly on horseback, conducted 40,000 church services at the age of 85, preached to no less than five times a day, declared, I plant one foot in hell and the other one in eternity, and I'm going to snatch as many souls out of hell as I can before I die. Yeah, Baba, Sunday. Hallelujah. May God drop a blanket of the Spirit of the Lord upon us today. Yeah, Baba, Baba, Sunday. Listen, they're going to hell, and the only hope that the world has is the church. There is no answer outside of the church. Preach the word. The great commission is go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations. Preach the word. How will they hear except they be a preacher? We got too many men standing in platforms that want to preach. You should have been a doctor. She went into law school. You should have learned how to program computers or drive a truck. Because preaching the word, where there's a layman or on this platform, requires great preparation. And the prize is very expensive. A lawyer can prepare for a case to go to trial. But at the end of the day, if he loses his case, his client might spend 20 years in prison. But if we lose our case, our client spends the rest of eternity in hell. The surgeon may slip with a knife and touch a part of the brain that renders his patient void of wisdom. And they spend 30 years with a subpar life. But if we don't wield the sword of the word of God with accuracy, it's not 30 years of poor life, but it's forever in hell. Can I tell you, God has put a mandate on you and me to stand in the gap and to reach into hell and get a hold of them and say, I'm pulling you out. I'm pulling you out. I'm pulling you out by the power of God. They say, but they don't want to be saved. That doesn't matter. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You got to worry none about being burned. You got to be able to pay the price and reach into the very depths of the souls of men and pull them out. Charles Spurgeon, over 100 years ago, said, If simmer sinners are to be damned, at least let them leap over our bodies. To get there. And if they are to perish, let it be with our arms around their knees, begging them not to go there. When's the last time you got up in the middle of the night because of the burden that was on you for the loss? We don't have anointing because we got too many singers that look at this platform. It's just a means of launching a career. 
instead of singing for the glory of God. We got too many preachers on television that don't give a rat's rear about souls. They use their 30 minutes only to be an infomercial to sell CDs and books that don't say anything. Just candy sticks about how God will make you a millionaire and how it's, there's a shift and it's coming. God's going to raise you up and it's all about you. And the Bible said in the last days they would not be able to endure sound doctrine. They heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears. Tell me how great I am. Tell me how, how wonderful I am. Tell me I'm the best you've ever heard. Give me a record-breaking sale book. Let me make CDs. Let Everybody stand up and raise their hands when I sing. Uh, oh, pastor, that's the best message I ever heard. Uh, it really doesn't matter where you like my message or not. Uh, what matters did the word uh, get down in your soul uh, and move you by the spirit of the Lord uh, and snatch him out of hell. It could be the only thing that's standing between a soul going into eternity next week is you. How many times have we walked past somebody that was on the edge of going into the next world without Christ? And we didn't even know it because we become so dull from lack of prayer that we have no discernment. We cannot feel their cry. But if you can hear in the spirit, there's a cry coming out of this nation saying, help me, help me, help me. I'm burning. And God's saying, you can snatch them out of hell by the powers of the Lord. Jesus would cross a stormy sea because he could hear the cry that his disciples could not hear of a man in tombs, demon-possessed, could not be contained or chained by the systems of men. Prozac didn't work. Psychology didn't work. Drugs didn't work. He was worse than ever. But one moment, hallelujah, when the master of compassion said, I will risk the storm to get to the other side. And when the demons saw him, they went to their knees. It was a beautiful deliverance because Christ reached into hell and pulled him out. Preach the word, preach the word, preach the word, because it is only the word that's going to save men. I'm tired of the wars between churches and denominations. Well, you can't have church on Sunday. It has to be on Saturday. No, it can't be on Saturday. You can't have any music in your church or you're not part of the church. No, you believe in a rapture. No, we believe in the post-trib. Listen, we don't want to worship with you because you believe in three gods and we believe in one God. And we got so much war going on with each other. Well, hell is marching fully, bringing in the lost while the church has lost its purpose. And God is saying Give me some men and women that care more about souls. Sell out or get out. There ain't any in between. We're not here to entertain you. We are here, hallelujah, to excite you and charge you to charge hell with a bucket of the blood of Jesus and pull them out of hell. So well, I don't want to get involved. Our young generation of children that are like blank computers that somebody's going to program them. And in the church today, you can't hardly get anybody to work in children's ministry. I didn't plan to go this way, but I don't apologize for it.
Well, I don't want to miss the preaching. It's on tape. <laughs> but you might affect a child that one day <laughs> they will say, what changed your direction? I remember a lady when I was six in Sunday school, and she taught me something that forever changed my life. Oh, God. Make us weep for the lost. Make us weep for the lost. Hallelujah. God put something on us <clears throat> that we reach in hell. Even people that don't want the help, they don't know they're dying. They don't know they're lost. Great churches are rare today. And I don't mean great in the sense of number or facility, but churches where you can march in and feel the presence of God. <clears throat> you know what's the best church? The one that you get convicted in. That's a good church. Hallelujah. You don't get to do this. Choose the church of your choice. Go to the church the Holy Ghost told you to go to. Because <clears throat> if we choose the church of our choice, I'm going to find the one that has the shortest service, allows the most sin, takes up the least offerings, cancels on a moment's notice for every whim, and then tells me I'm going to heaven and I'm going to get the same reward that Apostle Paul did. Don't work like that. you got to be willing. Hallelujah. You know, they, there's an old saying that says, fight fire with fire. And years ago, you could see it. They still do it. Firefighters still do this. They know there's a fire coming, a forest fire. And so they're just sitting there going, I don't know what we're going to do. They start their own fire. And they burn up for a section everything that fire would have got to. And then by the time the fire gets there, it just dies out because there's nothing to burn. We need to start a fire, hallelujah, in the Holy Ghost, <clears throat> that when the enemy comes to destroy our nation, that there's nothing to burn because we've already removed it because we started our own fire. <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah. God, the Bible says this, he said, I am a consuming Fire. Now I'm almost Sunday. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's a clarion word being released in the atmosphere right now. And God, you know, I, I, years ago I would have people tell me, you know, Brother Ken, I just, um, um, we, we knew you were having church, but they come up with the craziest excuses over the years. I've heard them all on why you couldn't come to church. And one day the Lord spoke to me, and he said, if they're a part of this church, and they stayed home without a reason to stay home, the word that you preach, I will require of them on Judgment Day, even though they did not hear it, because they did not hear it because of choice to stay home. This book is going to judge me and you. You know why I live <clears throat> what I preach in private when nobody's around? Because the Holy Ghost is around. 
and Jesus is around. Hallelujah. And see, you and I, we don't answer to each other on Judgment Day. We answer to God Almighty. <clears throat> and I want, I don't want to show up empty-handed. I want my sheaves to come with me. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah, there's a lot of you that are going to bring sheaves in with you. Nancy, there's no hot telling how many girls are going to march into glory with you because of Mercy Men's Reach. And so many of you that have made such a commitment... There are unsung heroes in this building today. There are unsung heroes in the church. I get so many letters from people over 80 years old that say, Pastor Kent, I can't really get out of the house, but I want you to know I'm a prayer warrior, and I'm praying for the kingdom of God. And I think, oh, Lord, where would we be if it was not for the invisible remnant that have never known fame, never known fortune, but they stand in the gap and they are standing against the hordes of hell and they're drawing a line and saying you cannot cross over. If being committed costs you money, then do it. I'm not talking in terms of you giving away what you have. I'm just talking in terms of sometimes you have to turn down things. Or scale back. The devil knows your price. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? How many men and women are going to stand before God on judgment day, highly successful in this world, and yet stone cold broke for the currency of the world that is to come? And think that because I made it here, God understands. No, listen, God can invent money. He can create it if he wants. What God is after for in Regeneration Nashville is me. Men and women that are willing to have some scars from the burns, but we're not going to let one soul go to hell that's put in our care. You got to be willing to burn for Jesus. Hugh Latimer declared to Ridley when being burned alive at the stake, for preaching the gospel. Be of good cheer, Ridley. Play the man. For we shall this day light such a candle in England as I trust by God's grace shall never be put out. We are approaching as this year ends and we step into 2023, the church is stepping into the final harvest of souls. We are stepping into the field of souls. What are we going to do with it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But for somebody that was willing to get scars on their hands from flames, you and I would not be here right now. Somebody reached into hell to get a hold of you. Somebody, hallelujah, at great personal cost, reached into the fires of hell and latched on to you and said, I will not let you go while we fought against the conviction and tried to bite the hand of our rescuer. But we, they did not let go. And you and I are here today because of the dedication and the sacrifice of somebody. Hallelujah. 
my God, I feel the spirit of the Lord. I, I, this is, I know this is going to airways around the world, but I'm telling you, there is a clarion call because God is getting ready to make a final decision over who is going to be involved <clears throat> in this last move of the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And I, I, a few years ago, <clears throat> I don't know if you remember this, Steve, but we had presbytery, and at that time they prophesied over you that you would prophesy. Remember that? And I watched you stand up here today, and it moved my soul. Steve is one of our elders. He's also one of my very best friends. And I, I watched God <clears throat> move on my thought. I'm seeing the word of the Lord being fulfilled today. <clears throat> there are things in you that God's getting ready to bring forth and release. But not till he's convinced that you're sold out. And the Lord told <clears throat> the Israelites when they were getting ready to walk into their inheritance the night before, he said, cook the lamb, and he said, eat it all. Don't have any leftovers. Too many believers. <clears throat> I'm not a leftover person. My wife, when we go to dinner, she'll say, yeah, I'll take that home. And I think, on three days, I'll be throwing that away. <laughs> and in three days, four days, I'll throw it away. But there's too many believers that have too much of the leftover of Christ in the cupboard of their soul. Do you feel this? My God, I'm telling you. The Lord is moving on us today in this house. <clears throat> we want God to give us our own place, our last service, outside of the miracle of the Lord, which I know he will do. It's December 31st, New Year's Eve. I don't know what we're going to do, but I'm at peace because I know this, you can't kill what God's birth. <clears throat> but I also tell you this, Regeneration Nashville, with the mandate of God that's on us for this region and even around the world, we weren't God's first choice. I can name you several churches in this city that at one time Rule this city in number, facility, money, influence. And somewhere they lost their love for souls. And they began to make adjustments because the crowds that begin to come, they didn't want to lose them. So we're going to be more appeasing. We don't want people to feel uncomfortable. And, and it's amazing when somebody really famous comes into the church and they're living like the devil. All of a sudden, we just forget all of our God-given standards and holiness. And we give them a blank check to live any way they want because somehow so-and-so comes to our church makes us feel important. I don't really care who you are, how much money you've got, how many Grammys you've won. you still got to come through the cross and you can't stand on our platform and sing if you're living for the devil. you got to be like the rest of us. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. We are not for sale. This is not a church to promote you. Jesus, it's about Jesus. It's about Jesus and nobody else. Who's going to shock all those churches? Everything that they compromise to keep. We're going to do that and more and still be Pentecostal, Holy Ghost filled, anointed, 
John Bowman's going to run. My wife's going to run. <clears throat> the hair lifts the devil, so be it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 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 If you're here, you need to be sold out. Serve the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, all your strength. Get on board and give God 100%. Now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, fear not, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, and I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. And neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. And I... Since thou was precious in my sight and have been honorable, I have loved thee, and therefore I will give men for thee, for you, the people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons far and bring my daughters from the ends of the earth. For every one that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory and I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. Hallelujah. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Take a chance. You say, but what if I get burned? Then God will heal you. But Paul said this. I bear in my bodies the marks of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, it's time that we get some born-again people in this house that got some scars of soul with them on them and are willing to pay the price. Because you know what? You're taking your belief system with you to judgment day. And these Christians that are for abortion. It's appalling how many churches would not celebrate what God did on a national level when he reversed Roe versus Wade. They wouldn't even acknowledge it. So all you spineless, hypocrite Christians, if I can use that word, that want to tell me it's all right to be a, have an abortion. It's all right not to go to church for two and three years. I, I want to stand beside you uh, when you explain that to the martyrs of, of the 11 million that died in the Inquisition at the hands of the Catholic Church uh, and to Martus Littimer and tell me uh, it doesn't matter how you live. Uh, listen, you got to be sold out. You got to be blood bought. You got to have no mark, no blood. Limits, uh, no sin in your life. Uh, greater is he that is in us uh, than he that is in the world. Well, if this is my last message, I'm going out with a bang. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar said unto them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, 
Do you not serve my gods and you won't worship the golden image which I've set up? And they said, O king, we're not even careful how we answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. He will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. You know, I figure God's already saved me out of hell. There can't be anything worse than that. If you think about where some of you been, some of you sitting here have shot heroin in your veins. Some of you snorted so much coke that you could buy a brand new Bentley for the amount of money or what you spent on cigarettes and alcohol and pornography sites. And here you are clean and beautiful and pure and full of the power of God. And look what the Lord has done for you. You're not divorced. Your husband didn't leave you. Your wife didn't leave you. Your kids didn't die. And here they are in church with you. You got the joy of the Lord as your strength. You're full of the power of God. The Almighty will talk to you whenever you say, hello, Jesus. He's right there. He's never left you. He never forsook you. How much more do we need than what God has already done? We just need this kind of preaching. I've been really excited. I haven't been able to preach for like, seemed like three, four weeks. Every time I get up to preach a prophet sign, I thought, you know, it would really be nice just to be able to actually preach. <laughs> I mean, I'm thankful for the prophetic, but it, I tell you what, it takes you to another level of faith. And, uh, but sometimes the Bible didn't say that they'll be saved with a prophet, a preacher. That's why America's in the shape that it's in. It's because the, end, the hell got rid of our preachers. Replaced them with educated, eloquent, motivational speakers. That write books that are on the New York Times <clears throat> best-selling lists. They don't offend anybody. They get done speaking and I'm sitting there thinking, I have no clue what you just said. You can listen to them for a month and you still don't know what they believe. I can promise you when you leave today, you will not wonder. I wonder what Pastor Kemp thinks about that. You may not like it, but you won't wonder which side is he on. I'm on the side of the Bible. I'm on the side of Jesus. We make no apology for it. We stand for holiness, righteousness, apostolic tongue-talking, Holy Ghost-filled, dancing fools for Jesus Christ, full of the power of the Lord Jesus. We believe in the first and the last. We believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We believe in the divine Godhead. We believe we believe in divine healing. We believe in dancing. We believe in shouting. We believe making a joyful noise unto the Lord. We believe, hallelujah, of getting loose in the spirit of the Lord and letting God do what he wants to do. Yeah, ba, 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 Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God trying to shake you loose, reaching into hell and getting a hold of you. If you can't remember the last time that God's moved on you, you're backslid. You can't remember the last time the Holy Ghost got inside of you and you prayed for a solid half hour in the Holy Ghost. There's something wrong with your walk. God, hallelujah, is a rain of God and he wants to move on you on a daily basis. Said, be it known unto thee, O king, we're not going to serve your gods. We're not going to worship your golden image, which you have set up. Right now, especially in the United States, Satan has set up an image in this nation. And he's telling everybody, you are going to bow down to this. 
or else we're going to kill you. Give it your best shot. Give it your best shot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, you can't touch us because we got a ring of fire around us. You, the enemy can't touch you because you are standing inside of, of a blood covenant circle. So go ahead and rage and imagine a vain thing. Send out all of your taunts and all of your threats. But when the dust settles and it's all over, it's going to be me and you standing in glory. And the devil's going to be in a lake of fire with the Antichrist and the false prophet and everybody else. And we win. Don't you bow down. Snatch them out of the fires of hell. That's what we're getting ready to do. That's why God birthed this church. It's we're going to stick our arm that's fire retarded with the Holy Ghost and begin to pull them out, pull them out, pull them out. I'm tired of preaching to Christians. God fill our church up with drug addicts, unsaved, cocaine, homosexuals, depressed, sick, and defeated. And watch the Lord set them free. He got mad, said heat it up seven times hotter. You know, the Israelites were in Egypt, and they called it the iron furnace. But let me remind you about the iron furnace. They all died in the Red Sea. And Israel possessed Canaan land. So no matter what you call it, no matter how hot you make it. In fact, in this story, the guys that threw him in died from the heat. And the king said, throw him in. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And then Nebuchadnezzar, he was astonished. He said, did we not cast three men into the midst of the fire bound? They said, true. He said, then how come I see four? Walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And I don't know how you knew this, because I'm pretty sure you hadn't seen him. He said, the fourth is like the Son of God. <clears throat> And he came near to the furnace and he said, hey, guys, servants of the Most High, you want to come out? And they came out and their bodies, the fire had no power. There wasn't a hair of their head singed. Their coats weren't burned. They didn't even smell like fire. And then the same guy that tried to kill them said, oh, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, has sent his angel and delivered them that trusted in him, and they changed the king's word. Because they did not yield their bodies, so they would not worship any God except their own he said, I'm going to make a new law. He said, from now on, everybody living and breathing under my rulership is going to honor their God. <clears throat> this is what we're getting ready to see. God is getting ready to put us in the fire to pull people out. And the only way that you won't perish is if you are solely committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are lukewarm, you will be on fire. May we, hallelujah, light up this dark world. 
burning for the glory of the Lord. How many times has history recorded that the power of God would be so strong in a building that neighbors would see fire running up and down the roof where the rich cap was and call the fire department because they thought the building was burning down. <clears throat> I will end with this. When Jesus said, it is finished, and he shed his blood, and it dripped into the dusty earth, and his physical body gave up the ghost. When the curse of sin was broken, what did Jesus do? Headed to hell to snatch out of the fire those that the enemy said belong to me. And oh, it must have been something that when Jesus got to the gate and the devil said, you can't come in here. He says, watch me. I got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And he walked in and he began to snatch them. Come here, Isaiah. Hallelujah. Come here, Abraham. And the last Adam walked over to the first Adam who felt like Paul. I'm not even worthy to be in, the, in this. Truly, I'm sure Adam felt like he'll lead me. And Jesus walked over there, got a hold of the first dad and said, come here. He's leaving you. And I can't prove it, but it's very possible that the last Adam and the first Adam walked out shoulder to shoulder with the rest of them behind him. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And he came back up out of the earth, triumphant by the power of God. And that day, Jesus snatched every soul out of hell that believed in him. America is full of men and women that believe in Jesus. They don't believe in the church. There, nobody watches Christian television except Christian. I want to be on CBS. <laughs> 7 o'clock Wednesday night and replay this message. I hear God saying, I need you. Because Jesus isn't coming back to snatch people out of hell. You are. What kind of price are you willing to pay to keep somebody from going to hell? Stand with me. Now, I want you to close your eyes for a moment because I can sense in the spirit the Holy Ghost is talking to you. <clears throat> and there's adjustments being made in you right now. And the first of all, here's one thing I want to be clear. This is not about money. Too many people think that if I give a supernatural offering, then it excludes me from obedience. Keep your money. Give him your heart. The prophetic word of the Lord today was there is wealth to be released. It's never yet been released. So it's not God doesn't need your money. He needs you. 
What is the Holy Spirit saying to you right now about your life? And as the Lord is speaking to you in this moment, if you're willing to tell Jesus, there is no price too high to pay for me to be a soul winner, then by your act of coming to this altar and standing here today, you are telling the Lord, I'm giving you the reins of my life. And however you can use me. But that's my altar call right there. So when you're ready to come, you'll come. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus needs you. There are some people that will never, ever be reached except by you. I don't want to stand on judgment day and God say, see that person right there? They went to hell because I needed you and you weren't available. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I really didn't know how to preach this message. I just knew the Lord said, take off and he would finish it. You are valuable to the Lord. He's not here to condemn you. He's here to call you to another level. You're going to come into a place of such joy and fulfillment over these next few weeks that you never dreamed possible. And then the Lord's going to say, because you sought first my kingdom and my righteousness. Now all of the other things that were important to you I'll just give them to you. <clears throat> deep waters right now. There's deep waters running right now. Hallelujah. You can lift up your voice. You can cry. I don't care what you do, but there needs to be a response to the Spirit of the Lord today. It's not complicated. With God, it's everything or nothing. If you can't give Him everything, then God says, keep everything that you got. share this with you because this is a true story there was a <clears throat> I think he was a, a Christian and the Lord came to him in a dream I believe it was and he said I need the keys to your life and to your heart and when he looked he, he said I had a big ring of keys everything in my life and I said okay Lord he said I'm giving them my whole ring of keys he put them in the hand of the Lord <clears throat> and Jesus looked at him and he said but what about that one little key that you've got deep down in your pocket he said oh Lord he said that's insignificant that's just a little tiny The Lord handed me back that big ring of keys. He said, if I can't have that one, keep the rest of them. How many of us have one little area of our life that the Holy Spirit over the years has been after? And we say, God, I surrender all. And what he wants is that the part that's most important. Jasmine, can you sing I Surrender All? <clears throat> what this service is about is God is preparing this church for what's getting ready to come in. He's getting our attention. What I love about my wife is soul winning is what drives her. Soul winning. 
That's what started the bridge with so many. But there are many of you that have the same heart. Let's pull Nashville out of the fire. To all of my online members around the world that are listening, pull them out of the fire. Say, Pastor Ken, I can't get in your building. Doesn't matter. God is omniscious. He's omnipresent. Oh, 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 oh,